Hello, welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. Today I'll start making some knobs for my stepper motors. We'll be having a look at cutting a hole in plastic using a hole saw. And also, for beginners, I'll be looking at changing the jaws on a three jaw chuck. So let's go into the workshop, see how we do it. Today I'm making some blanks to turn into handles for my machine. I've just cut those out, I think it's nylon. Big block of nylon. And like all plastics, as soon as you get the tool warm, it starts to melt and stick. Now, you may remember these sort of hole saws where you select the blade, fix it to the, the disc, then use that in your drilling machine to cut a hole. And the problem with these type of thing, the teeth are very small and this generates a lot of heat when it's cutting so it just melts the plastic. Now I was trying to think of a way of cutting these discs when I found this old hole saw. It's called a dial saw and you can cut a hole from one and an eighth up to two and a half inches. It's got a fixed drill in the middle and these teeth around the edge will move in and out to give you the diameter you need. So I've set it at maximum, locked it up and we'll see how that cuts. Each tooth on the end is the same as a saw blade. You've got two teeth and they are offset so it gives you a, a wider groove than a tooth and that's easier to sharpen. The only downside on this as far as I can see is the length of this drill that they fitted. Instead of fitting a short drill that comes maybe half inch over the end of the teeth they fitted a standard drill and you have to have clearance under your drilling machine to get this in and the part. Didn't need to stick out this far, I would have uh, had a shorter drill made to fit that. But I can't see any way you can change that drill. It looks as if it's made as part of the, the unit. You have a nut on the back. The nut on the back is a left hand thread. That slackens the two plates off and then if you turn the plates teeth can come in to a setting and then lock the nut up. So when you unlock the nut these are, are loose. When you lock the nut up the two plates come together and these become tight. The only disadvantage is you can't tell exactly what size hole you cut in and you can't put a vernier across because they're odd. So I just thought I'd show you that maybe people haven't seen it but it's, it's this one's about 10 years old at least I don't know whether they still make them but it's just another take on the old circle cutting saw blades that you can get For anybody that's just started or purchased a lathe and are just learning about the lathe, I'll just show you how you change the jaws. I've taken the jaws out just by unscrewing and eventually they will come out. And I'm replacing the jaw, which is that one, which grips there and inside a bore, to this one, which will grip on the outside. The reason for that is when I open this up to fit one of these plastic discs in, the jaws are right on the edge of the scroll. The scroll is the part in the middle which acts as a part of the thread that holds the jaw in. I've changed from holding it there to holding it on the inside of this jaw so this jaw won't be so far out and it'll be fully engaged on the scroll. Now on the three jaw chuck you should have each slot for the jaw numbered up with a number and on each jaw you have a number marked that tells you which which jaw it is. You can only fit number one 
onto slot one because the thread or the teeth on the back here that form part of the thread are all different they're in sequence so if you put them together you'll see number one which is the top one starts lower down than number three so if we put one and three at side by side you can see the difference in the teeth so if you put the wrong jaw in the slot when you close it down one will close down before the other so they're not going to be equally spaced there'll be one tooth in front or behind so it will probably close down something like this this will hit the center first and this is nowhere near it so these jaws are numbered for that reason so that's number one slot here and if I turn this round you can see in the slot the first thread or the first part of the scroll just coming into the, the slot so I back that off put number one jaw in then holding it down turn the chuck so that the jaw goes in that's in rotate the chuck to the next one keep turning and you can see the the scroll has just come through there for the tooth so now I'm on number two take number two jaw feed that in push it in at the same time close the chuck the chuck key and that will start to feed in rotate round to number three there's the scroll coming round put number three jaw in hold it in turn the scroll with the chuck key and then they should all start to go in when the chuck key in what I do is I will go in until the outside of the jaw is level with the chuck and they should all be the same if you've got the positioning correct on the scroll if you put one jaw in on the wrong thread one will either be deeper or not as deep so you'll have to back it all out and start again so that's how you set your chuck jaws so I can put the plastic in now because there's already a hole through the middle I'm putting a 7mm drill through Now I've reamed an 8mm hole in the centre of these plastic parts. I want to make a mandrel to hold this. It would be interesting to see how these tungsten carbide tips perform on aluminium. Now I'll find a cap head and washer to hold that. I've just tightened the cap head up with a little washer in front so that will stop it spinning. Now I can true the outside up. So 
this is diameter is 55.7 574 so I'm just getting it so that the, the tool tip will touch there and there centralizing the tip in the center of the the wheel doesn't matter what the diameter is, I'm just trying to get them all the same. So I'll change it for the next one. Line it back up again. next thing I want to do is turn the outside diameter down to half an inch and part this off so I can use the mandrel part on my indexing fixture. Now this part that I've made the small mandrel fits into a half inch collet. And that goes into my indexing fixture. Then I can take out the aluminium. This is a half inch cutter end mill. Fit the blank onto the Hit the cap head with a washer. Now I've set in the, the cutter just less than halfway through. If you go into it there, the cutter will jam up because it can't clear the centre part. So I'm going in. about half of the cutter and what I'm doing is making some grips on this where I can actually turn this by hand because at the moment being smooth you can't get a grip on it so I'm just putting some semicircles in around the outside there'll be six of them equally spaced
Once you've gone round, feed the cutter into the depth you require and complete the second cycle. And then if you have any sharp edges, you can remove them with the scraper. That's the handle. So what I need to do next is drill a hole through to the center and tap that for a grub screw. Now I'm using an 8mm tap. The pitch of the thread is a bit coarser than a 6mm or a 5mm, so it'll grip the nylon better. Change the tap now for the bottom in tap. You don't need any oil. And the 8mm grub screw and come through the centre. On the end of a stepper motor, if you use the motor where the spindle comes through both sides, you'll have the shaft of the motor coming out with the flat on and the idea of these handles is that I can put the nylon handle on there once it's tightened down I can turn the end of this handle which turns the stepper motor and the shaft So I can move the CNC machine when there's no power to it. I've just fitted the one to the Z axis. If you look inside there you can see I can turn the motor by hand. See it moving now. That's a very fine feed. And when you look at, sometimes when you look at the screw thread, it doesn't look as if it's moving, but you can see from the hand wheel, it's moving. And that looks a lot better, or feels a lot better than the wooden hand wheels. Well, that's the end of another project. I hope that was useful. And if you enjoyed it, why not subscribe? 